good afternoon. For today's project, I'll be making detachable cups. 1530s and 40s, we see in portraits where cups were attached to the shirt. The cups did not become detachable until the 1560s when Elizabeth was queen, and those became detachable wrist ruffs. And this is to give you an idea of what the ruffs would have looked like. The wrist ruffs would have matched the ruffs around the neck. For today's project, what I would like to do is to combine the cuffs as we knew them from the 1530s and 40s and make them detachable like they were during Elizabeth's reign. Because if you're like me at events, there are times where I need to roll up my sleeves and I really don't want to get my black work dirty. Let's get started. First for this project, you'll want to get your fabric and then get a measuring tape and measure your wrist. In this case, I don't want it too snug, so I'll make it six inches and then I'll add an inch for seam allowance. So I'll be cutting my fabric at seven inches. Now with your fabric, it's always good to have it ironed. As you can see, I've not ironed mine, so it's a little wrinkly. It just means I'm going to have to really make sure it's flattened out before I cut. And now I've got this fabric folded over, so here's one layer and here's another layer because the area going around the wrist is going to have a front side and an underneath side, so it will be double layered. And given I have two wrists, I need two of the front and two of the back. So first what I'm going to do is, let's see, I'm trying to get my, the edge of my fabric together. Again, this is where ironing would have helped. Okay. And now from the edge here, I'm going to measure seven inches. So that would be here. Now I'm going to measure seven inches again from there for my second wrist. Again with this, um, as I've said in previous videos, this would be easier um, marked with, with fabric chalk. But as you can see, I'm using pins to mark my place. Now I want it to be three inches in diameter. Or, yeah. So I'm going from the edge and marking up three inches. As you may be able to see, the edge of my fabric here is not straight. So I'm going to straighten that before I measure anything else out. Be right back. Now as you can see, I've got my pins placed. And now it's time to cut my fabric. And right now I'm just cutting right along where the pins are. Now I've got a pin right here in the middle to divide my two wrists. And there we go. Now I've got the base for my cuffs. Now it's time to work on the main part of the cuff. Now for the part of the cuff that goes up and over the hand, as this was part of the, the wrist, and then the cuff goes over the hand, it's up to you as far as how long you want it. If you just want a short band, if you want to cover most of your hand, 
and just the same depending on how long you want it will then tell you how many pleats you'll have to put around your wrist. For my cuffs, I'm making them four inches wide. And again, the fabric is still folded in half. What I plan on doing is cutting the strip and then cutting it in half. And then one strip will be for my right wrist and one for my left. Now to give you an idea, if I cut it here, then this whole strip will be on my wrist, which means, to give you an idea, there will be lots of pleating. For this next part, I'm going to use my embroidery machine to embroider the ends of the cuffs. As you can see, I'm wishing I had cut my fabric a little bit wider because now it's only secure on the top and bottom and not on the sides. And if you look closely, I'm able to pull the fabric here a bit, no matter how tight I make the hoop. But we'll see how this goes with the machine. Wish me luck. Okay, I've selected my pattern, and I'm about four inches from the one edge. Let's see how this goes. the first section of my embroidery as you can see and now I'm working on the next part. Well as you can see here is the back side and the back side and here's what my embroidery machine did to my bobbin, so obviously I'm not meant to have this pattern. I'm going to cut more fabric and try again. And now I'm working on my second test. Okay, well this was my second attempt. I don't know if you can see, but the tension on this is horrible. And my machine ate my bobbin again. So obviously today's project is not meant to have black work on it. Sorry about that. I'm still learning how to use the embroidery machine. I finally figured out the tension. And now that I've gotten the patterns embroidered on the cuffs, I'm now sewing three at the edges. And now time for the second cuff. Okay, now that I've got my edges trimmed, I'm going to lay it on one of the wrist parts of the cuffs and start my pleating. I want to make sure to leave a little bit of space here for the seam allowance. Now at this point I've pinned my front edge and I've left space there. I've pinned in the middle, directly in the middle, and then that end. Now it's time to pleat Now, by the way it looks, I could do one large pleat or I could do two smaller pleats. And now that I've got my pleats on here, 
I'm going to put this one on top and pin everything down. Now what I'm going to do from here, because how I said to leave the space there, that's because when you flip it, this will be on the wrist, and then that's the cuff. So what I'm going to do from here, as you can see, I've got my pins already on here, and I'm just going to transfer them onto here. You want to make sure to keep everything nice and tight. And now that this one is pinned and ready to go, it's time to do the pleating on this one. And again, leaving a little bit of sewing space on the edge there. And now that I've got everything pinned together, I'm going to sew it. Now that I've sewn the edges, I've only sewn three sides. I'm going to flip this right side out. And poke out the corners here. I'm going to do that to the same for this cuff. And now you have two options. You can press this down with an iron and then sew along here and that will help support this and give this more of a stiff look. Or if you don't want to sew it, then go ahead and fold in, fold in the ends like this. and then pin down your final seam. Now it's time to sew the final seam. Now to finish off your cuffs, you'll want to put hooks and eyes, hooks on one side, eyes on the other, and then wrap it around. Your product's done, and here's what it will look like. To give you an idea, here's without, and here's with. I hope you liked the video, 
If so, please subscribe. If you have any questions, please let me know.